Now, some of the first projects for DIY electrical that you would do as a homeowner is just updating light fixtures or possibly installing new light switches. Maybe you want something with motion detection. Maybe you want a humidity sensor for your exhaust fan or something to connect up to your smart devices. Pretty much all these fixtures and devices are gonna come with pigtails that have stranded wire. That means that you're going to have to deal with the number one source of failures that I run across, and that is when stranded wire and solid meet. Now, this doesn't have to be complex, but there are a few things that you need to know to make sure that you get a solid connection whenever you're installing that light fixture or these switches, because if you get that bad connection, that increases the resistance at that connection, and depending on how much current we're putting through that, you can really start generating heat, possibly even arcing, and then at the extreme, even result in a fire. So this is something you absolutely want to avoid around your house. So let me give you a few tips that are gonna make that next project that much easier and ensure that you have solid wire connections. Now, first let's demonstrate the problem. So we have the 14-2 Romex. This would be very common at a light fixture. Now for stripping your wires, don't forget, you have solid and stranded and each stripping hole is going to be different depending on if you're stripping solid. Like we have here, we would go into the 14 gauge solid hole for this neutral side and we go ahead and strip off the insulation. Now for the stranded, I would not be going into that same 14 because that's for solid. I actually need to go down to 14 for stranded. Stranded has a little larger diameter when compared to solid. So you'd need to go and reference your stranded or just know you're gonna be into the 12 gauge solid for 14 gauge stranded. And then that's gonna make sure you're not damaging any of the strands in there. And another tip, before you take off your insulation, it's always good to actually use that insulation that's on the wire and twist it to bring all those strands together. So when you now take off the insulation, we have a nice clean twisted piece of stranded wire opposed to strands fraying out like we have on the hot side here. So just another tip to make it a little bit easier for you. Now the default condition is you just take the small generic wire nuts and place both our wires in there and then we would start to twist. Now we would start to feel the wire nut biting on the wires and getting much harder to twist. So many of us would stop at this point and actually think that everything is good. Now, independent on what type of connector you use, you would want to do a pull test and we can already see that although the stranded started to wind around the solid, it was by no means a solid connection. And that's because the wire nut is actually just biting on the solid. So when we take a closer look, we can see the stranded started to go around, but the wire nut actually only bit into the solid. And this is exactly the source of our failures is we think we have a solid connection, but that is actually just the wire nut biting onto the solid and not bringing the stranded together with the solid. So thus we have a, a loose connection and that's where that additional resistance. And to be honest, a common failure is just simply the wire pops off and you might see flickering lights or the light not working and then that is the source of your failures. So there is a better way and if you are gonna just use the wire nuts, which I don't use wire nuts, I'll show you what I use here in a little bit, but if that's all you have, just make sure you're leading with the stranded. The strand should be about an eighth of an inch further out than the solid when you introduce your wire nut. So then once you start to bring those together, the wire nut will actually bite down on that stranded. Usually a telltale sign is when you really start wrenching down on that wire nut, you should feel the stranded trying to pull around the solid. Now you do your same pull test on both sides, independent on what kind of connector you're using to make sure that that is now a solid connection. And that will work. It's just so much more prone to failures. Stranded and solid come together in a wire nut for DIYers. Now, before I show you basically what I feel is a superior option for DIYers, I just wanna to touch on a few things for clarity. Why stranded wire? 
Stranded wire is much more flexible. You'll see it when we have devices that are much larger. The bodies are much larger than a standard light switch or outlet. So the flexibility in these wires makes it a lot easier to get it back in the box and get it mounted. Now you might also see that some of these wires are coated. Now this is called tinning and it's basically a solder coating around the stranded copper. Not to be confused with stranded that have a silver color to it. Now some people might think this is aluminum wire. It is not. This is just tin plated copper and it gives it a little bit more corrosion resistance and you'll see that in some light switches. So you'll see a silver opposed to copper color can be a little confusing. Don't worry, you, you bring that together with solid copper without any issues. Aluminum and copper should not be coming together but this is just tin plated and this would be a tinning process on the outside of that stranded. And then as we mentioned, it is nice to use that insulation. Some manufacturers are nice enough before you take that out and start to wire to use that insulation to go ahead and twist those strands together. And it just makes a nice compact package and you get away from fraying those strands out. So you'll find that a lot of these devices will come with insulation stripped but you can use that to pull together all the strands and now for the easy way what wire connector is really going to make these projects easier these really shine in ceiling lights and vanity lights you're probably up on a ladder you're kind of balancing on the ladder you have the light fixture in your hand you have wire connectors in your hand you're, you're trying to make those solid connections that's why that stranded and solid fail so often you have so many things going on you have poor lighting you're really reaching overhead your arms are getting tired it's just a situation that's prone to failure but there's these small lever nuts the Wago 221 lever nuts, which I've been recommended for years and years, these make it so much easier because before you even get on the ladder, you can take your fixture and you can pre-wire. So I have a Wago 3 wire in this ground. Let's say I had the ground coming from the Romex and then I also had a ground coming from a bracket or a metal box. I have one connected, I have the two levers open and ready to place the wires in before I even get on the ladder. I could use an inline splice for the neutral. So that's just gonna pass that straight through. This is a newer connector from Wago that I really like and I use in some applications. And then this two wire on the hot side. Again, I'm already connected to my light fixture and I'm ready for the hot side of the Romex to come in. So now when I go up on the ladder, it's as easy as closing three or maybe four of those levers to make secure connections. And I can also see through the housing and I can see the wire is fully seated into the Wago 221 lever nut. And that means I can see the little bus bar and that's really what's making the connection between the wires. So I'm confident I can do my pull test and I know that that's gonna equal a solid connection. And you always see the link right below this video over to our Amazon store where there's a few starter kits. You can get a starter kit with the two wire, the three wire, the five wire, and the inline splice. Now that's the kit that I start with and I just actually have them in a Milwaukee pack out where I just always have a stock of those four types of Wago 221 lever nuts for any of my projects around the house. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments and if you just want more information, jump down in the comments. There's always additional information that I leave out that the viewers bring in that are gonna help you with your future projects. Speaking of future projects, I did a project on this TV right here where I took power from this outlet and I was able to get rid of the cord dropping down and put the power outlet behind the flat screen TV. Now I did that without having to do any drywall work. I didn't have to do any painting. I did not go down in a basement or a crawl space. And I didn't go into an attic. It kind of sounds like a riddle, but there is some rhyme or reason to it. And it's gonna make your project so much easier around the house. So check out this video right here. I'll walk you through the complete process just in case you have a project like this in your future. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.